Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a little closer look at this device that I picked up recently. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So if you follow me over on Instagram or Twitter, you probably already know that I picked up a Yaesu FT65 uh, a few months ago. Now, I'm really enjoying this radio, but one of the things it lacked was APRS. Hey, for 85 bucks, you can't beat it, though. So, when I decided to try to configure this to work with APRS Droid the way I had done on the uh, bow things in the past, I decided to go ahead and upgrade things a little bit. So, what I ended up picking up was this little guy, and I've got it turned around backwards. Uh, this is the MobiLint. Now, I got the, I believe it's the second version that's not compatible uh, with the iPhones. But since I'm running an Android, it really didn't uh, make much sense to spend the extra money. So anyway, I bought that. I bought the cable uh, that goes with it. And now this can sit along in my backpack while I'm hunting or whatnot. And all I need to have with me is just the uh, old Android phone that I've got uh, APRS Droid running on. So let's take a little bit of a look at that. Uh, let's test it out today. Um, now, sooner or later, I'll probably do a tutorial on how to get MobiLink connected to the Android and all the settings that you need to uh, go through, because it was quite a few of them. But I've only done that once, and I uh, need to be a little bit more familiar before I try to do a tutorial on that. I've also got something new installed uh, in the Jeep, and that is Yak, yet another APRS client. I've upgraded to that over Exaster because it has much better offline maps. So we'll kind of take a look at both of those today. Let's go test this thing out and see how it works. All right, so I'm going to do the best I can with showing you uh, what's on the uh, screen of the Android phone. Hopefully you can kind of get a peek at that, and there's not uh, too much glare on the screen there. But we'll kind of be jumping uh, back and forth between this and the VNC server on the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we're going to try is we're going to try to send a message uh, from APRS Droid, uh, which is KM4ACK-7, over to uh, the Jeep, which is dash five. So two different SSIDs, so we should be able to pass messages quick and easy back and forth between the two. All right, so from the HT, we just sent out this uh, little message, hello from the HT. You can see it right there on the screen. Let's go ahead and try to reply to that and make sure messages are working both ways. Uh, so we'll say KM4ACK, I know that's really hard to see down there, uh, it's so small, but I just typed in my call sign uh, with the SSID identifier, uh, so KM4ACK-7, and then the message here, so we'll say hello from the Jeep, and let's go ahead and send that, and I just felt the phone buzz telling me that I've got a new message coming in, so should be able to see that right there. Hopefully that'll focus. So it looks like messages are working uh, appropriately between the two. So now let's go ahead and test out the Digipeter function of Yak from the, uh, a from the uh, HT running APRS. So I should be able to send my position uh, with the phone. It hits the Jeep. The Jeep picks it up, repeats that information out using its 50 watt radio and we should get spotted on the APRS.fi maps. So we'll go ahead and click. I'm going to kind of pick this up so hopefully you can see it. There's a little red light indicator right here that shows when it transmits. So let's go ahead and hit the transmit button. And there's the red light. So that should have just been digipeded out. Let's go over to the maps on APRS.fi and take a look. All right, so let's run a quick, whoops, wrong button. Let's run a quick search for KM4ACK, and we'll use the dash seven, which is the identifier for the HT. And I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit here, get a little separation, and we'll click on this. And now you can see 
uh, that the HT was digipeded through the Jeep on over to the wide area gateway, which is W1ARN. That looks like it's working correctly. Fantastic. All right, so, so far I can pass message, uh, messages back and forth between the Jeep and the HT, and the Jeep is digipeding the traffic from the HT. All right, so one more test before we uh, head off this morning. Uh, a lot of times I'm out here hunting in these woods and there is absolutely no cell service, depending on the area you're in. Uh, this morning I think I've got uh, roughly one, maybe two bars of service, so not a lot. I can go right down the road and I'm gonna lose cell coverage altogether. So let's try sending a message uh, from the HT using APRS Droid and see if we can get, get that delivered to our mobile device. Now, I've been playing with this uh, for the last few minutes, so we'll go ahead and I'm on, say, test two on this one uh, from the HT. And we'll go ahead and hit the send button. I see the radio transmit. The Jeep should repeat that data out and we should have a text message on our mobile device here in just a second. There it is, guys. So that's working. So that's really nice to have if I'm out here and I'm going to be running late that morning. Maybe I've taken a deer down and uh, the wife's expecting me, say, by 10 or 11 o'clock. I know it's going to take me another couple of hours. I can shoot her a text message and let her know I'm running late that morning. All right, guys, so there you have it. There's a look at the MobiLink. Now, the MobiLink 2, remember, is only compatible with uh, Android devices. If you got an iPhone and you want to use it, you'll need to move up to the MobiLink 3. I'll leave a link to their website down in the description below so you guys can check them out as well. All right, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head out, and we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3. Okay, why did that not work? That was working just a minute ago. So there you have it. There's a closer look at the MobiLint unit that I recently picked up. That should bridge the gap. Hmm, nope, don't like that. Um, so if you follow my uh, Instagram or my Twitter feed, you guys probably already know that uh, recently I picked up the Yezu FT65HT. One of the things that I wanted to do when I, uh, after I picked up this radio was I wanted to uh, upgrade the APRS uh, connection that I was using with radios that aren't UP... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's start over. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to do... Uh, it, 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 it. Ah, there it comes. And I felt the 